Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for uh, coming out this evening. I'd like to see how I can get started. So uh, at, this, at this time, we'll call it May 10th, 2017. I'd right right. just like to let you all know that this evening we started at approximately 5.30 p.m. and we reviewed our agenda. We did add a few resolutions to our agenda, and um, I will just briefly just tell you what those are. Um, they are not contained here in this document, but I will tell you what they are um, before we begin to call the meeting to uh, to uh, to order. Um, we have a resolution that one is to um, uh, engage Jack McDonald Engineering on continuing our uh, work towards getting sewers on um, on Hamburg, on, excuse me, on Burdeck Street. Uh, the other is for engaging also uh, Jack McDonald, really continuing work uh, for our water system, for uh, identifying some of the needs that we have, and more importantly, helping us to um, set us up for future grant opportunities uh, regarding our water system improvements to mains, valves, uh, water storage, et cetera, water, water um, pumping. Um, the, um, another resolution 157.17 is for a emergency connection with the town of Goodland uh, for um, town of Goodland is uh, is uh, installing a uh, interconnection on um, <coughs> Goodland Avenue and County Line Road, and that's only for emergency purposes only. Um, at some point in the future, if the town were to put in a, another one or two wells over on Rice Road, you know we've talked. I know that past town boards have talked about the opportunity that may. Uh, be having the future of selling water to surrounding communities that need it or even engaging a company to come into town that uh, would need it for water processing uh, would be the water excuse me for processing or for bottling that kind of thing but our, our system currently is meeting our our needs uh, and redundancy for our needs in, in uh, town and not I'm not talking about your water uh, district here in the junction that's uh, the water five which serves the rest of the community in Rotterdam so, um, so that's what that resolution is for. Uh, 158.17 is for the uh, State Environmental Quality Review uh, regarding uh, the Jack McDonald um, engagement uh, for the water system. And 159.17 is uh, to um, close a chapter for the town from a few years ago, four years ago, regarding a, D, a, a EPA consent order regarding a, the sewer line that uh, runs uh, by uh, Campbell Road and Edgewood Avenue, Vienna Street, if you will, in that area of the town to our sewer plant. Um, we had um, over a $30,000 potential fine from the EPA in 2014. Uh, we have been able, through the efforts of our town attorney and, and, and others in, um, in the town um, government, to get that, that penalty reduced down to 15,000. But what we are also doing as part of our efforts is uh, a tremendous amount of improvements to the nature trail um, entrance. And uh, that, if you know where that is on, on West Campbell Road, uh, where uh, across from uh, Gunsmoke and the Trusco Bank, uh, the, that entrance now, if you go there, obviously it'd be difficult. I wouldn't want you driving your cars in there, to be honest with you, the, the potholes are tremendous. But that whole area will be redone. It's going to look beautiful when, when it's complete. So we had planned to make those impro some improvements there. But what happened here in the discussion that, uh, that our <laughs> town attorney, Kate McGurl, had with the EPA, uh, she was able to help uh, come up with a resolution that really meets our needs and helps us, rather than just spend money on fines, uh, helps us also invest our money in our parks and in the town. So that's what that final resolution is for. And all of us voted in favor of adding those resolutions to the, to the agenda this evening. And at the end, if someone would like uh, my copies here of, of the complete resolutions, you know, you, you're welcome to them. They will all appear on the town website, um, and so you'll you'll have all of that data, uh, all the information should you should you should you require. So, uh, Ms. Marco, uh, would you uh, please call the roll? Mr. Christo, present. Mr. Lamore, present. Mrs. Snellen, where is absent? Mr. Romano, oh here. Mr. Thomason, present. Could you all please stand? And the uh, state of pledge, please. Mr. Carangelo, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Jim, would you lead us in the pledge? Thanks. Sorry. I remember the pledge. I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I didn't want to say Jim because there's probably four or five Jims in the room. Thanks, thanks very much to, to all of you uh, here in Rotterdam Junction, particularly in the firehouse here for accommodating us this evening and giving us the ability to be here tonight. I appreciate it very much. Um, just as a reminder, a couple of reminders here uh, for uh, upcoming events, and I have a few things that I'll mention at the end of the meeting also. Uh, our town board meeting uh, on May 24th will be held at the Center for Advanced Technology at Mahoneston campus. So as you go into the Mahoneston campus, they put in a beautiful facility there. Uh, the Tabosi's uh, uh, facility, it is tremendous. And if you haven't seen it yet, this will also give you an opportunity to see it. Um, what we intend to do is at 5.30, which is typically the time to start, begins our agenda meeting. Uh, for half an hour, we will uh, tour the, the facility with someone from the administration in Mahoneston. Uh, they'll take us around and then at six o'clock we'll begin our actual agenda meeting at that time but i wanted you to know if anyone would like to come that's what we, we intend to do there uh, for approximately half an hour i'm hoping that we'll be able to keep our agenda uh, uh down to maybe a handful or so maybe 10 <laughs> resolutions or less uh because we have we have a, a couple of big public hearings and there are a couple of the resolutions that are on here this evening calling for public hearings for that meeting so you know, I want to make sure that we accommodate as much uh, public discourse as possible at, at that site. And, uh, and I think if you haven't been there again, I think you'll really be, be impressed with what, uh, what, they've, what they've accomplished there uh, at Mahoneson. Also, our uh, Memorial Day Parade will be a Thursday evening, May 25th, as uh, we do annually. And uh, the, the uh, annual uh, Memorial Day services at Town Hall will be May 29th, uh, 2017. And at this point of our uh, meeting, I'd like to uh, call for public comment privilege of the floor. Now, Ms. Marco has a, a board here. If, has everyone, have you signed in? Is there anyone here that wants to speak this evening that did not sign in tonight? Anyone? Okay. Ms. Marco, would you please call the first person? Chris Lavallee. <coughs> Chris Lavallee. My name is Chris Lavalle. I'm at 13 Gary Street, Friday Junction. My husband, Mike Lavalle, has brought this issue up to our highway superintendent in the past. We've lived here for over 38 years, and this has been an issue every spring. The culvert pipes go under Iroquois Street, and one of the pipes is not functioning, and the other two are partially plugged. During heavy rains and spring thaw runoffs, the water has no place to flow, and this causes the water to back up and flood the homes on Erie Street. In the 38 years I've lived here, it's happened to my home five times. The best solution would be to replace the pipes with a larger four-foot culvert, but if not, at least repair and clean out these culverts. Also, something needs to be done with the erosion taking place along the guardrails that go over the culvert pipe on Iroquois Street. Either replacing or repairing these pipes need to be kept clean on a yearly basis. Of course, the best time would be the early spring. Hopefully this can take place soon. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Jeff Klein. Mm -hmm. um, you've probably seen it before, Lee. Um, but the an apple Junction store. We'll be opening it, soft opening Saturday morning. <coughs> Big grand opening next Saturday is the Hungry Chicken Farm Market. We're going to have munchies. We're going to have Capital City um, Coffee Roasters. Coffee, which is really good coffee every morning between six and nine. So if you're driving Albany, if you're driving past us, please stop. We're going to have um, hard ice cream and munchies at night. And once the apples come in, we'll have apples. Um, so I invite everybody to stop by. Like I said, we have a soft opening Saturday morning, and we'll be there all day Saturday and Sunday, and then six to nine a.m. Monday through Friday, and all day long weekends. Um, I brought some business cards. If you take one of these, and you come next Sunday, you get a free um, ice cream cup. So help yourself. I don't know if this is 
bribery putting them up here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, we'll, we'll just, it's just ice cream. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Jeff, thanks for very much for doing what you're doing there. Uh, well, thank you. It's been a long, took, took long time. It's been a long, painful process. I know. Here we are. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. Is this microphone on? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. My name is Dan Garrow. Uh, great to be back in Rotterdam Junction. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed speaking uh, last year's meeting, getting to know some of the residents of this great part of our community. Uh, Rotterdam Junction is steeped in rich history, and here we have the oldest house in the Mohawk Valley, the Maybe House. This community has also shown the American spirit recently when it encountered the flood from Hurricane Irene. As Americans, we lift ourselves back up, we brush off our shoulders, and we rebuild even better than before. I recently participated in the Canal Clean Sweep at the Kiwanis Park, our completely volunteer Town Parks Committee needs recognition for their contribution to the park cleanup effort at the Kiwanis Park and other town parks as well. They had a handful of individuals turn out and hopefully next year they can double that number with the assistance of people like yourselves. Tell your families, make it a fun experience to go out and assist with the park cleanup. I also want to thank the Rowdy Junction Firehouse uh, Chief Sean Taylor for hosting this town board meeting. Congratulations are in order for the new firehouse. We must take the time to recognize all that our volunteer firefighters do for us. They don't wear hero capes, but their turnout here certainly should come with one. Nationally, one of the things that we are seeing is the public being pitted against its law enforcement personnel. This divisiveness is dangerous. It creates a negative environment for our officers to work in and it is counterproductive to the police department's job, which is to protect and serve us. Our Rotterdam Police Department is held in the highest regard and to the highest standards. Those individuals, along with our volunteer firefighters, respond to the call of duty and accept the fact that they are taking extreme risks every day. In closing, we must continue as a community to support our volunteer firefighters, EMS, and our boys in blue. Thank you and God bless America. Jeff Dodson. Good evening. My name is Jack Dodson. I reside at 1311 Cipriana Terrace. I'm a licensed professional engineer, own a consulting engineering firm with a specialty in municipal engineering, and I routinely provide town engineering services. I'm here tonight to express my opposition to the proposed Whispering Pines Village and the proposed zone change from agriculture to senior living district. For the record, not opposed to providing affordable housing for our seniors in the town of Rotterdam. I respect, love, and support seniors and very much appreciate their contributions to our community and our families. I have taken an opportunity to review this project in detail. Meeting minutes, reports, drawings, draft local law, your secret documentation, site plans, and understand the project to be 530 units of independent living apartments, assisted living memory care neighborhoods, and a senior complex three stories high, 60 feet, with an underground parking garage, an er emerging care facility with emergency room doctors and medical offices, retail and a 2,500 square foot swimming facility. The senior complex is sited on about 10 acres with a completed building square footage of 550,000 square feet. For comparison purposes, this is the size of five Walmarts in Hanford Plaza and about the half the square footage of the Crossgate Mall. I acknowledge this project also includes 30 townhomes, 97 single family cottages, and an executive nine hole golf course on the remaining 80 acres. Uh, estimates include uh, this facility will have 1,000 or more residents, 250 or more workers, and 600 or more parking spaces. 
The project includes the demolition of eight existing residential homes on Helleberg Avenue. This project is a large scale project estimated at $87 million. Uh, this project is one that the town board would not review on a routine basis. Um, I appreciate the transparency of the project to date. Uh, the town board meetings and presentations, the senior center presentation, the planning commission presentation, and the uh, lessee group presentation to a selected group of uh, affected residents. Given the size, the scale, the impacts, and the proposed $87 million investments, and experience with presenting controversial projects to the public, I recommend the town board consider an additional level of transparency by dealing on this project, okay, before its implementation. Hold a minimum of two public information meetings to introduce this project to the public and openly discuss the merits and drawbacks. Importantly, the project does have important uh, impacts that are significant. The town board is considering new zoning classification, the new senior living district, and a corresponding local law. A change in zoning from agriculture to a high density senior living district. Why consider approving this large scale, high impact project before a comprehensive planning study has been done to evaluate alternative locations in the town for such a district? It has the appearance that you guys are doing spot zoning. The project consists of 550,000 square feet of commercial and institutional buildings mixed with the rural nature of the townhouses and single family cottages. This project includes multiple zoning classifications and one senior living district. The draft of the current law does not restrict the size of the building and the project in scale and use type is wholly out of the character with the surrounding environment. The emergent care facility is a commercial enterprise in a residential neighborhood which again negatively impacts and conflicts with the character of the surrounding community. There are better locations in the town to site this facility. There's a change in the dynamic and the character of the neighborhood. The town board understands this concept and the precedent with the High Bridge Peters Road proposed development. There's traffic impacts are sure to result from the large scale project situated in an ag and residential area. Water and sewer infrastructure needed for this project will be significant and also likely be a, a significant environmental impact. Spare bear with me and step up. No, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Adverse visual impacts in this project are also significant given the large scale nature of the project and its undeniable visibility to surrounding properties. There's noise impacts are another concern. In short, there is a large scale project that is not contemplated under the town's existing comprehensive zoning code. This project is also wholly out of character with the surrounding community and given its immense scale, this project undeniably possesses <coughs> potentially significant impacts. Indeed, even a cursory review of this project demonstrates a number of potentially significant adverse environmental impacts. Far passing the threshold requiring a positive declaration and preparation of a draft environmental impact statement under seeker. Preparation of an environmental impact statement would allow for the public to possess whereby, whereby impacts would be fully identified and evaluated, alternatives considered, and impacts avoided or mitigated. This simply will not happen if the town board issues a negative deck for this project. If a negative deck is issued for this project, the public in the town as a whole will be robbed of the opportunity to fully evaluate the potential impacts, alternatives to this project, proper mitigation for which will otherwise undoubtedly be significant adverse environmental impacts. I understand the need for affordable housing and the neighborhood concepts. I also understand the legal and procedural requirements the town board must comply with when considering projects. We understand the fair housing regulations and ADA requirements, seeker requirements of, uh, as I discussed above, and the town board's mandate to provide a stabilized tax base. Given all these considerations, I respectfully re recommend the town board dial back the implementation of this project. Table the call for the public hearings uh, for the local law and change in zoning scheduled for the meeting tonight. 
hold a minimum of two public information meetings to allow a thorough review by the town and public with open discussions of merits and drawbacks. Reconsider the location of the emergent care. Reconsider the concept of the senior complex mixed with the rural nature of townhouses and single family cottages. The senior complex is an institutional commercial uh, development with a large staff like a nursing home mixed with residential, rural residential properties. Issue a positive declaration for Seeker and address the impacts with the public and the developer through the draft environmental impact statement. As part of the draft environmental impact statement process, perform a visual impact assessment for the, uh, for the public. Seeing is believing and understanding the scale of this proposal as well as the community as well as a community character study. Evaluate the requirements of the developer to provide a bond given the estimated cost, 87 million, and the uncertainty of implementing the construction in the housing market. Further evaluate as part of the draft environmental impact statement, a process, sewer, water, drainage, noise, lighting, and the other identified environmental impacts and provide the local law to the public for review and comment, which we do now have a copy. In summary, I urge the town board to work together with the public and affected residents with an increased level of transparency that, for this project. In the spirit of the town's model, Rotterdam, a nice place to live, it is imperative that residents believe the town board represents the interest of its citizens so they truly feel Rotterdam is indeed a nice place to live. Thank you for your consideration and time. Thanks, Jay. Thank you for those comments. Great. Thanks, Thanks for your time. David Starr. Uh, I'd like to address the town board on the uh, subject of sidewalks on Main Street. Uh, my building's been there since 1887. Been paying taxes on Main Street, uh, the same as anybody else. And the, uh, the town doesn't have to plow the road, pave the road, salt the road. They don't even street sweep the road. The street sweeper comes down, he goes up and down the side streets, he goes by my house, he lifts his brooms, he keeps on going. Uh, in a weird time, the only thing that they do on Main Street is they'll come down with a snow plow and they'll clean the sidewalks if you call them and tell them to come out. If you don't call them, they won't come out. They don't do the sidewalks. It'll be a week before the sidewalks get done. And uh, when they do it, the, uh, the machine continuously slides off the sidewalk and down into the road. Uh, the, the guy running the plow said he wishes he didn't have to come out here because the sidewalks can constantly break his machine. Uh, since the town isn't responsible for the road at all, and we pay tax dollars just like everybody else, I would like to propose that you take our allotment for blacktop, salt, plowing, sweeping, and give us some new sidewalks. It's the, uh, it's the heart of the town. When you come in, it represents everything about the town. And it looks like crap, you know. Uh, we're, we're a part of Rotterdam, you know. We have to abide by certain laws that you impose in the town of Rotterdam, but yet we're considered out in the country, you know. And uh, I think it did make a, a positive impact on the town and uh, the speed of traffic coming in. If you had decent sidewalks, people would, you know, recognize it more as a neighborhood. Uh, I don't go 80 miles an hour on Alexander Street in the development, but yet, you know, the cars go through here and like it's a highway. Um, I just, for our money, I would like to see new sidewalk for Alexander Street. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. I uh, live at Tennis Bella Street, Northern Junction. Uh, back in 2011, my house was flooded and uh, devastated both first and second floor. Um, the county helped me. The town worked with me, helped me with <coughs> building permits. I replaced the house. Things were good. My neighbor at Baldessabella Street, who has uh, rental property, 
about two years ago, gutted his downstairs. He only had first floor damage. He did not have second floor damage. He did not have to replace the house. <coughs> he got into place to its entirety. A little over a year ago, he began to uh, rebuild the downstairs for tenants to come in. And uh, I never noticed any building permits. So I've been working with the uh, uh, inspector, with uh, Jimmy Keith, about this problem. And I keep calling and reporting the problems. And I know he's sending letters to the owner or doing what he has to do. The building is almost complete and almost going to be rented out soon. My concerns are, because I live 40 feet away from the building, mm -hmm. Nothing's cold. Now, the upstairs is like it was 50 years ago. And I believe he's tying in new wires with old wires. No code. I'm concerned there's, number one, possibly a tenant getting hurt. Number two, my property getting damaged if there's a fire. I know it's hard to make somebody do something to code. But there's got to be somewhere so you guys can take it further because if you don't, I'm going to. I can't be living like that. I hope you just understand my concerns. Now you've got tenants living upstairs. After the flood, we were all supposed to get, before you replaced or even rebuilt your house, you needed a CO to live in the house. I was told by the building inspector there was no record of a CO either. So he's got tenants living in a house that was devastated on the bottom floor. And there's five-year-old kids living up there. Big, big concern to me. And again, these people have been nice to me, building my house, giving me permits. And I know it's hard to make somebody do something. But there's got to be something we can do about it. What's, what's that what's that address if it's 12 is 12, 12 oh, sorry my apologies I'm in my fault no I know and, maybe uh, you said that, Jimmy right? Keith can give you all the info on it yeah and, uh, yeah uh, and my second issue is an ongoing issue with the corner of Isabella Street and Stratford Lane which the town last year finally got the resident there to move uh, take down one of his buildings because it's been an eyesore for years sadly enough he moved it 50 foot onto a relative's property. The place is in disarray terribly. If anybody who lives in the junction knows what I'm talking about. Along with the house at the corner of Main and Scrafton Lane that was devastated, owned by a couple people, still vacant, windows busted out of it, rats, cats, wood chips, in and out. I have to go by these places every day, all day long, and I'd like to give you some pictures for what yeah, Thanks. Okay, this is what I have to look at every morning, noon, and night when I go by. Okay? And again, you guys did a good job making him move it, but he took the building and moved it 40 feet ahead, made it worse, and all the debris is still there. So, you know, the answer to the junction, I hope we can do something to make this place up. I ride through uh, the hills of Skahari and Pratsville, who were more devastated with flood than us. None of that goes on. No place is clean. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and um, what I'll do is, as we go through a couple of the resolutions, I'll, I'll address um, I'll, I'll address a few of these a few of these, uh, a few of these items if that's okay. Get some of the speakers uh, brought up here this evening and, and at the end of the meeting also, okay? <coughs> okay, Ms. Marco, let's, uh, let's get into the uh, resolution 137.17. Appoint individuals for various seasonal summer positions at the Town of Ireland Highway Department, effective May 15, 2017. Okay, we have a motion, please. I'll move. Motion by Member Chris, do a second, please. I'll second. Okay, second by Member Wow. Anyone on the question? Um, just on the question, I'm going to um, recuse myself from voting because one of the, the five individuals here is a, is a son of one of my cousins. And uh, even though the name's different, I still am not going to vote on the resolution. So just let you know. Um, they're, they're just one of the kids that I've been in, in the summer program here at the Iron Department, which I had nothing to do with, with Iron. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, uh, 
call the budget roll, please, Ms. Marshall. Mr. Cristo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Okay. So we have uh, three yes. Oh, okay. same. I'm sorry. Recuse. I'm sorry. Same. Uh, okay. Yeah, so. It's not. So there's it's three yes, the one recuse, and one absent. Yeah. Okay. I recuse myself. So we have um, three yes, and me saying okay, but not okay. All right. One thirty-eight seventeen. Appoint Ian Jaster of Rotary, New York, as a member of the Town of Rotary Conservation Advisory Council for the remainder of a two-year term, commencing May tenth, two thousand seventeen, through December thirty-first, two thousand eighteen. Can we have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Villano. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmer. <coughs> it's not a question. I'm, I'm excited that, that uh, Mrs. Jasper has decided to join the Rodney Conservation Advisory Council for us. She, she has a, a tremendous amount of experience in environmental matters and conservation matters. So thanks for bringing her uh, up to us, Andrea, and asking her to join uh, the, uh, the group. To, question. to follow up on that, I, I'd like to thank Andrea as well. She's been a fantastic resource for the town of Rotterdam. I got to meet her my first year sitting in the town board. I've always been impressed with what she does bring to the table. But with this particular appointment, you know, these are exactly the kind of qualifications I would hope that somebody would end up bringing. And I'm very, very pleased. Once again, and I guess I should never be surprised with what you bring to us, but thank you. Okay, we have a motion by Member Polano, second by Member Larmore. Ms. Marco, call the roll, please. Mr. Cristo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Bolano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Yes. Resolution 13817 passes. Resolution 13917. Authorize the supervisor to accept the Schenectady County 2017 2018 County Initiative Program CIP grant in the amount of $1,500 for the summer concert series held at the Rodney Senior Citizen Center, 2639 Hamburg Street, connected in New York, 12303. Okay, I have a motion, please. Thank you, motion. Okay, motion by Member Larmore, second, please. I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmore. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Snow Herrera's absent. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Tomazon? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 139.17 passes. Resolution 140.17. Offer public hearing to be held on Wednesday, May 24th, 2017 at 7 p.m. at the Center for the Advanced Technology, Mahonison Campus, CAT, 400 Warrior, Warrior Way, Rotterdam, New York, 12306, upon adoption of a proposed local law of the year 2017 for the following purpose to create a new zoning classification of Chapter 270 Zoning Article 31 entitled Senior Living District. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I will move for a public hearing, primarily because I want to hear the public's opposition to this particular project and for the public to have an opportunity to hear my own. Okay, and so are you, are you making a motion? Yes, yes so okay. I move. All right. And I will second it. Very, very similar ideas. I, I do think it should be scaled down, but that's my opinion, and I do want to hear the town people's opinion. So, um, on the question, this, this resolution is for the. So, there's two public hearings that are going to happen uh, at the meeting at the end of the month. One is for the actual creation of a of a of a zoning classification for the town that we can utilize some anywhere in the, in the town. The second, uh, which will be 141, and I'll speak to that after, but, uh, you know, I, I think as we have our dialogue and discourse, I think that we need to, in, in some ways, while they are obviously related, we also need to separate them a bit and understand that, that we need to move the town forward with, with a zoning classification that helps us to create areas in our community uh, where seniors can go and, and have affordable housing, um, have services that are necessary as we all age, um, and hopefully, those of us, um, and when I say it like this, you know, from an economic perspective, while many people do uh, do move to other parts of the country, to a warmer climate, to be with their children, whatever the case may be, um, there are many of us remain here in our own community, and, and I think those services are necessary. So these, again, while the, these two um, uh, resolutions, 140 and 141, are related, they are also separate. I would also like to say that earlier uh, during the agenda meeting, I, uh, I informed the board that it's my intention, so I'll just tell you this ahead of time, it's my intention that at the May 24th meeting that we are not going to close the public hearing 
that we will leave the public hearing open uh, through the June 10th meeting at least. Uh, the June 10th, is that right? The date, right? Uh, I think I, so first meeting in June, I think it's right. Uh, so, so, so know that. So I, I want you to, to, to know that um, you know, we're not going to close, I'm telling you that publicly, we're not going to close the public hearings for either one of these. Uh, June 14th. Two, uh, 14th, thank you, June 14th, I'm sorry. We will not close those public hearings. I will, we will keep them open uh, through, through our meeting in June. So uh, we're accommodating more people to be able to come and speak, and at the same time, you know, we, we will be able to uh, to hear not only from, from more more residents, but uh, I think more importantly, we'll be able to have a broader dialogue and, and uh, we'll hear from um, the developers as well at that meeting and probably at the following meeting to see if there's some changes to, you know, potentially what they what they propose. And that doesn't mean that they will, you know, uh, that, 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 uh, that it's, uh, it's a, a, if you will, a, you know, people use the term dumb deal, I guess, is what I, which I, I, I hear all the time in our community. <coughs> but that's just not the case. I think that, uh, you know, one, one of the things that you'll find when it comes to development, regardless of where it is, whether it's something like this, retail development, housing development, um, the proposal that's made is, I haven't seen one time yet where the proposal that's made is actually what is, is, a, is completed. I've just not, just never, I've never, I've never seen that yet. Um, so, you know, I, I think that there will be enough comments made from the public, from uh, people that are interested in the project. Uh, when I say interested, that they have an interest in the project. So, uh, we have a motion by Member Bolano, second by Member Larmore for a call for the public hearing. Any, anyone else on the question? Yes, Mr. Go Supervisor. Um, all of my opposition to the actual proposed project, I'm going to leave for discussion during the next resolution. However, there's one thing that I have to bring up regarding this particular resolution, right? And it follows up on exactly the words that you just said. Our town supervisor just said that he has never seen a proposal that has been completed in fruition the same way. Not 100%. No. All right. Well, the thing is, our wise planning commission had the opportunity to review not only the project itself, but also the zoning classification. All right, and this zoning classification that's been presented to us was actually drawn, written by the attorneys Ms. representing the attorney. So that's not accurate. Our, our town planner, she she brought in a very broad scope document, a template. That's all it was. The, our our town planner and, and our town attorney and John Tingley all had their hands, if you will, in fine tuning the uh, the actual zoning that is called Senior Living District here. Okay, Let me so, tell you what the Planning so Commission said, because I, I, I want to read verbatim. What's, what's the date on that? Uh, the date Just on, give me the date on that. The date on, because this is what's in our agenda packet, mm -hmm. the date of Back the uh, zoning, let's see here. Um, I don't know. It's the one that's in the book. Uh, where is the date on here? I don't see a date on the signature line. Date on there, well, it's, it's signed by Peter Carranzo and John Denny, but I'm going to read letter L. In general, in general, although the Planning Commission views the applicant conceptual proposal favorably, the terms of the legislation appear to be overly general, which could unintentionally lead to the authorization of uses and ultimate site design that may not be substantially consistent with the applicant's current conceptual proposal. And that was a prior iteration, that's what I'm telling you. That was the, the very, very open scope um, uh, zoning, zoning uh, language, if you will, that the developer's attorney brought to the town board, uh, not town board, excuse me, to the town planning. Um, that is not what you see before you in um, we are being there are two different two you're, you're talking about two different things you are you're you're purposely misinforming in some ways the the the, the, the difference here with what you see here yeah language is here this language is not what what the developer's attorney proposed it is not this is the language that our town planner um, uh, our town attorney reviewed um, and the zoning language is on the website so this 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 exact zoning that you're referring what you're referring to is again was was a very broad scope proposal and to peter commensal's credit our town planner our town attorney's credit the planning commission they said this is this is you can drive a bus through this 
and we're so to use that terminology. That's exactly we, what the concern is, and we're. But doing that's not the zoning. But that's not the zoning language that we are calling for a public hearing on. We in the twenty fourth, Joe. We are allowing six hundred and eighty senior living units. We are allowing retail. We are allowing medical facilities. We are allowing. We we, 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 we are allowing in zoning classification. Just like we do for business zoning or any other zoning out there, we allow certain uses. Mixed use zoning is going to be residential and business. What we, we allow, when we, when we say we allow the town, and you look at any municipality out there, they allow different uses within the zoning classification. It is the public hearings, it is the, the people's voice, it is the town board, it is the planning commission that actually goes in there and determines and says to a developer and everyone else, excuse me, we're going to put a little break on this, we're going to put a little break on this, we, we like this part of the concept, what you're planning, but there are reasons why we don't like A, B, and C, but we love B, E, F, G, H, H. So again, I think you're you're really not telling the full the full scope here of what we're what's being proposed in this zoning classification. We we are really and how the planning putting, commission works. We are really putting the cart before the horse here, yeah. right? We're, we're 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 establishing a zone that is supposed to do a multitude of things, and we are going to be ultimately placing the zone over an area that is completely inappropriate for the function for which it's going to be used, okay? I think that we would be far better off having a developer select an appropriate location for the proposed project, and I'll list all the reasons why I think it, that should happen on the next resolution, and then decide exactly what the zoning requirements are going to be, because this is not a zone that's going to be utilized all over the town of Rotterdam. This is not going to be you know, your, your classic, you know, R1 or B1 zones that you're going to find in a multitude of places in the town. This is a one and done, we are creating a zone for a singular project. That's and right, using right. agricultural, I understood, I understand that it can be used in other locations, but we are specifically creating this new zone for one project, and it doesn't fit where it is. I wholeheartedly believe that we should have public hearings. And that's why I actually moved to call for it. But ultimately, this is a terrible project based on scope and for a number of reasons that I'll lay out on the next motion. All right, anyone else on 140? You know, one of the, one of the struggles that, that we have in Rotterdam, and it's a, it's a classic struggle, I think, in every community, is for the, is for the public to um, I think I, I'm going to say it like this: put put its faith in, in how the government structure is in New York State. You have a town board that, that acts on laws, local laws, zoning classifications, etc. You have a planning commission that is made up of, depending on the size of your community, for us is seven people, but they they actually help determine from the public comment what they will allow. It's, again, you're not you may not see all of these uses. In a project, no matter where it, where it is, it doesn't matter whether it's we're talking about Whispering Pines or we're talking about going to another part of, of Rotterdam, um, there may or may not be a fit for different aspects that are contained within the zoning classification. For example, mixed use zoning, one of the proposals that will be coming to us in the near future, and again, has nothing to do with this, but just to give you some concept here of, of what it is we're, we're doing. Um, for many years, the town has struggled with uh, areas where you might have an R1 zone, so residential and one family, or you may have a, a B1 zone, a business zoning, or B2 zoning, and those business zone classifications allow for different uses, different types of businesses to be within the geographic shape of that piece of property. We're going, if you look at Hamburg Street, and even here in Main Street, part of Main Street here, you know, we, we want to have what's called a mixed-use overlay. In other words, it will make it much easier for someone to come into a certain area of, a, of, a, of our community. Again, whether it's Hamburg Street, Main Street, Rodham Junction, etc. cetera. But they can come in and say, you know what, I, I'd like to develop this property, but it's own B1, there's, an R, there's a residential, there's an R1 next door, there's a different, maybe a small industrial use on the other side. To go through a spot zoning, pro to go through a whole zoning process to rezone all that property to maybe build a, uh, the space that is retail on the bottom or has some commercial uses on the first floor and maybe a second floor that's residential uh, it's just a, just a longer process but when you go down uh, into upper union street or you go into you know saratoga springs obviously you know we're not saratoga springs and i get that part so don't, don't i don't want it's but you see the different types of buildings that are there 
and the different uses that are there, and it looks fantastic. And the buildings are closer to the road, the sidewalks are there, the infrastructure is there, and, uh, and we're going to have that opportunity as well. So what does that mean? It just makes it easier for people to develop, but more importantly, what it does is it's an acceptable use. You're already allowing an industrial use, like say a gas station. You're already allowing a residential use next door for R1. And then next door to that, uh, on the other side of that is maybe a small business of some kind. So you already have a bunch of mixed use. But if you want to clean up that mixed use and make things look better and newer and really have something that moves into that part of your community or that, whether again, whether it's Hamburg Street, Main Street, doesn't make a difference, that is, that is, um, that is better for the community, that offers more services, that, that's new, uh, that, that offers an opportunity for more people to move in and again, help local business. That's what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to achieve, and believe me when I tell you, when it comes to zoning, I don't want to pick on Jack Dotson because he, uh, he and I have met, but well, it's maybe the second time, I think, right, over the years. But, uh, but he understands that. But at the same time, when you're, when you're in an area where you have, you know, I'm not saying not an area, but in a town like Rotterdam where our zoning classifications have really not been appropriately updated in a long time, and our comp plan, it talks about, it talks about, it talks about you know making sure that we have uh, new zoning classifications coming in to help with the changing uh, uh, population from the perspective of aging population from the perspective of uh, jobs and job creation that's what we have to do that that's our charge so i need you to know that while some people want to mix the two together i i can conceptually and very appropriately and honestly separate the two issues in two matters from what is zoning as a classification and what is a project, so, you know, what the project is. So, so know that, and that's what you have to have if you're gonna operate on the town board. And you have to put your faith in the community to come to the public hearings, voice their concerns. You have to put your faith in the people on the planning board to hear those same concerns, and things could change. But we're not gonna go and tell someone, please do not come in here <coughs> into Rotterdam with a project because we just, can't fit it in our community. We don't want it. Now, there's some things we don't want to see, and I get that. We don't need to go down those, those the, the, down that road of what you want to see and where right now, but we need to work together, and I, I want you to be positive and open, just like we're being here this evening. I think that's what, and the only way that we're going to get to a final resolution, um, regardless of where, you know, and what we zone uh, property in the town of Rotterdam. So, again, um, we're going to hold those public hearings open past the next meeting. You have my commitment on that. So we'll, we'll have we'll have much more dialogue uh, for both of these particular resolutions. Because in my in my mind, unfortunately, there is a I think a reluctancy, and I understand the reluctancy. I don't share it, but there's also I think a, again a, 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 an effort to try to combine the two. And in my mind, it's not we shouldn't be combining the two resolutions. Okay, so we have a motion by Member Blanc. Anyone else? I think I've talked long enough. Uh, Member Larmor as a second. Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? In the spirit of preserving the process and having the people being heard, I vote yes. Mr. Larmor? Yes. Mrs. For reasons I Mrs. Hill Herrera is absent. Mr. Villano? To call for public hearing, yes. Mr. Tomazo? Yes. Or yes. Okay, 14017 passes. Resolution 14117? Call for public hearing to be held on Wednesday, May 24, 2017, at 7 p.m. at the Center for Advanced Technology, Mahadison Campus, CAT, 400 Warrior Way, Rotterdam, New York, 12303, for the following purpose. To allow for a change of zone request from DC Senior Living, LLC, for property located in Rotterdam, New York, 12306, known as tax map number 71.5-1-5.112, 2188 Public Regatta. 71.5-1-7.1-2196 held per gallon. 71.5-1-5.111-2200 71.5-1-9-2204 71.5-1-8.111-0-address. 71-5-1-8.112-2208 public regatta. 71.5-1-10.21-2212 public regatta. 
and 71.9-2-21.11 Brown's Park. <coughs> the applicant is requesting a change of zone from Agricultural A1 to Senior Living District SLD for a project to be known as the Whispering Pines Senior Living Community. The proposal is to be generally consist should generally consist of a senior living community with a mix of housing types, including independent living, single family, detached, and townhomes, independent living apartment units, assisted living units, and memory care living units, along with a senior service center, a nine-hole executive golf course, a medical office slash urgent care facility, and an associated parking, roadway, multi-use paths and other improvements, all to be constructed on 96.5 acres <coughs> east of Heldenburg Avenue and west of the New York State Thruway I-90. Okay, may I have a motion, please? To call for public hearing, I move. Okay, motion by Member Milano, second, please. I'll second for a public hearing. Okay, second by Member Milano. On the question, Joe, did you? Yes. You know, I'm glad the Planning Commission actually took to heart because I actually read over the Planning Commissions and all their hesitations regarding this project mirror the things that I've brought up at Town Board, including the first thing, being sympathetic, being a young father of two children. I certainly understand what would happen if me and my wife were to pass away and to leave our children without people to care for them. The current age restrictions proposed in this law prevent children under the age of 21 that are unable to care for the residents to actually move in with those people. I would hate for people to purchase a single family residence within this development and then have to make the choice between adopting and caring for the children of their deceased children or in the alternative losing their house. Nobody should ever be faced with that particular choice and the Planning Commission brought that up as a possibility, as I did before this report was presented to me. <laughs> Two, it suggests that the developer has stated that all of the facilities except for the golf course and the medical facility on the property would be limited to individuals over the age of 55. However, in the zoning that they've proposed, <laughs> and with the tinkering according to the supervisor that's been made, Daycare facilities are still being promoted on the property. I don't know how many individuals over the age of 55 have children under the age of 12. I am sure that there are some, including my own father-in-law, that have twins as of the age of five. So it does in fact happen, but it is not often that you have daycares being provided for those particular individuals. Uh, no, it's actually both, according to the zone. Y yep. The project should not create an impact to the surrounding neighborhood. Mm. I am hard pressed to believe that there is going to be minimal impact to the surrounding neighborhoods. All right, if you put something the size of, and I could not have put it any more eloquently, it took an engineer to show me the light, but to put something half the size of Crossgates Mall on agricultural land, formerly used as recreational use, there's an impact. People on that particular side of town, people in those neighborhoods selected that area to build their residences. And I don't know, I, I, I would hate to assume that maybe even the deputy supervisor might have, but people that choose to back up against golf courses do that for a reason. That's the view that they want. However, something this magnitude being put on a golf course is complete spot zoning. Not only are we creating a zoning mechanism for it, we are actually completely subverting the character of the neighborhood for commercial development of the property owner. Vehicles, they were talking about, you know, 250 employees, possibly 600 or a thousand, up to 1,000 people living in this community, right? There is an impact on the roadways. There's an impact on County Line Road. There's an impact on church going over into Gilderland. And I understand it is not my job to legislate what is good for Gilderland, but what is good for Gilderland is also good for Hildeberg Avenue. All right? It is too much car flow, particularly because of, particularly because of 
the sidewalk issues. We have children that are walking to school in that neighborhood. We have the children's athletic fields in those neighborhoods. The children's bus garage is in that neighborhood. I was a student of the Mahanison School District. It is changing the character of more than just the neighborhood. It is changing the neighborhood in which the school is. Right? They want water flow testing. They want environmental impact. They still say that, and I believe that the zoning is too broad. But I have other concerns that they did not bring up. And I feel that this is the appropriate venue to discuss them. We are in a firehouse. This report does not discuss fire protection. There are no buildings in the town of Rotterdam that are going to be four stories high outside of the General Electric property. General Electric has a private, on-demand, full-time fire department to attend to its buildings. The town of Rotterdam does not. We do not have the fire equipment based on my discussion with the town employees. We do not have the ability... Which, which town employees do you know my uh, Town employees in the building department. Yep. Really? Does it, it, does, it, does, it, does it really matter? It, I'm, I'm, it, it, I'm does, sure it doesn't that, matter because you make you make I'm, a lot of I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you, you could name the employee, but... Have you... Have you let me ask you another question. Have you, did, did you, are you aware that the... That the um, that, uh, that the uh, volunteer fire companies have already met with the developers just because we were concerned with that. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am aware of that. I, I, I've, spoken to I, I've spoken to engineers about the process too. Uh, oh, engineers. Okay. Yeah. But what about what about the volunteer <coughs> fire companies that would be overseeing something like this? I'm not saying that it will happen, but what have you spoken to them? I have you're, not. Okay. So you're making statements. This is what aggravates me, frankly. Um, is, is it, it, is it this your is turn to talk? Public care? Well, I, I'm going to tell you. Can you pass the gavel down here? Because you want it back here? Uh, that's yeah, my name yeah, on it. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Can, can, I, can I have the... I'm just, I, can, I get, uh, honestly, All I right. think that you're missing, you're, this is, you're this complete is my misinformation and misinformed, but continue. We are, we are a panel of equals, Mr. Supervisor. We're a panel of equals when you're not lying and you're not making the up we, suggestion. If I could have the gavel. You know, you know, we got to get some control over the meeting here. Go ahead. You can All right. So, you know, sewage flow, right? These are all things that need to be addressed. Okay. The idea that we are going to allow a developer to establish a project of this magnitude, right, that is going to completely change the character of a neighborhood, and we're fast tracking it. All right, is a terrible idea. This is a project that should, in fact, happen in the town of Rotterdam. There are areas, one of which that we are all on board with developing through infrastructure, the Burdick Street corridor. I could see something of this magnitude going west of Burdick Street. There is an opportunity in the town of Rotterdam, and there's certainly a demand for the services that this developer is promoting. But. Burdick Street has a lot of benefits that this particular area doesn't have, including the ability to route traffic in other directions other than through this very residential and formerly agricultural area. You know, this is something that we should seriously take a step back. This is not something that we need in that neighborhood. It is a quiet area. We should preserve those assets. And the one last thing is, I have not heard anything about the water table. I have not heard anything about the wetness of that land. I've had the opportunity to golf there on many occasions. It's actually one of the first places I learned how to golf. But in any event, the thing is, the one thing I remember about Whispering Pines is how wet it is through all seasons that golf is played. From the early spring, there are holes that are simply not playable. Up through the fall, there are areas that continue to be wet. If we are going to be putting in foundations, if we're going to be putting in hard services, if we're going to be diverting water, okay, what is it going to do to the water table in that area? The thing is, there are a lot of issues with putting a project of this magnitude here. And I certainly, through the public hearings and the rest of the procedures of this town board, is going to go through. I hope I can convince some of the other me voting members of this board
to take a hard look at it and maybe look at it the same way I do. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. You're welcome. Yeah, but, 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 but again, but again, all I what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that, is that we're going to have a public hearing and listen to what the, the people <laughs> that directly impact have to say. You've gone through and, and made accusations that are not correct. You you, you started and, you, and the other part part of it is a water table. Those are all matters that, regardless of where development occurs, regardless of where it occurs, whether it's this or some other project, doesn't make a difference. Like the storage units, we're going to vote on a call for public hearing to change the zone to allow for storage units. Any question that needs to be answered will be answered, but we should listen to what the people have to say first and then make our determinations, not go and basically tell everyone that you are not just an attorney, but you're also apparently an engineer, you read through the zoning classification, but what you what you were pontificating about is not the zoning classification that's here in this public hearing. You're talking about a, a broad-based document that is not what's before us. And again, you're mixing it to try to, I don't know what the grandstanding is for, but it's an election year and I understand that that's what we do. I'm not so, running. Regardless, it's still an election year. Well, All right, 141.75. All right, now I'm just going to tell you something from, I don't, I don't know about the zoning and all that. What I do know is Heldeberg Avenue, I do know that from having walked it, giving, you know, giving out flyers, getting, getting uh, signatures and everything, it's a dangerous road to walk on. Normally it's dangerous without all this added traffic or anything. We don't have sidewalks on most of it. It's very dangerous, and that's for me as an adult. You're talking about adding probably a, almost doubling the traffic in that area, and then it's not going to be unsafe for kids or even for the adults. It's definitely going to be. It's a major impact. I do, I do believe in the project, but as a scaled-down project, so we don't have as much of an impact on it. And that's what we got to work towards, because it is seriously a bad location as far as the traffic and the walking ability without worrying about getting hit by a car. There's not a lot of way to, areas to walk. You want your kids to be able to walk on the road, you want them to be able to ride their bikes, that will not be able to happen. Thank you. Do you have a all right, Ms. Marco, let's call the roll for 14117, the motion by Member Blano, second by <coughs> Mr. Christo? Again, in the interest of the process, in the interest of allowing the people to be heard, and, in, in, and because of the commitment of the supervisor to keep the public hearing open for at least two meetings, I vote yes. Mr. Lamar? I vote yes, officer. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Volano? I call for the public hearing, absolutely yes. Mr. Tomazo? Yes. Four yes, four yes. Okay, resolution 14117 passes. Resolution 14217. Call for public hearing to be held on Wednesday, March 8, 24, 2017, at 7 p.m. at the Center for Advanced Technology, Mahatma Campus, C18, 400 Gloria Way, Rodney, New York, 12303 for the trial of service. To allow for a change of zone request from Anthony Pizone and Scott Murley for property located at 647 Arrival Road, Rodney New York, 1306, and is known as tax map number 48.17-1-1.11. The applicant is requesting a change of zone from agricultural A1 to general business B2 on four acres of a 4.94 acre parcel for the construction of self-storage units. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christo. Second, please. I'll second. Okay, second by Member Lama. Yes. Okay. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lomar? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Or yes. Okay, resolution 14217 passes. Resolution 14317. Declare the town of Iron as lead agency and authorize the town planner to prepare, file, publish, and distribute all documents necessary to, com to comply with 6 NYCRR and Part 617 and state environmental quality review relative to the above proposed amendment to the code of the town of Iron for a change in zone from Anthony Gazone and Scott and Murphy. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. I'll move. A motion by Member Christo, second by Member Lamar. Yes? Yes. Okay. Okay, anyone in the question? 
Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lomo? Yes. Mr. Silva Herrera Hatch? Mr. Volano? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Four yes, one yes. Okay, resolution 143.17 passes. Resolution 144.17. Authorize the supervisor to enter an agreement with the CHAs. Consulting Incorporated, located at Three Rivers Circle, PO Box 5269, Albany, New York, 12205, for a proposal for engineering services, RFP preparation for the Senior Center improvements in an amount not to exceed $10,500. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Guano, may I have a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member uh, Christou. Uh, on the question, this um, this engagement with uh, Clough Harbor is to assist us in, um, in again, preparing our, the RFP, a request for proposals for all of the work that has to be accomplished at the Rotterdam uh, Senior Center. Uh, the um, Senator Amador, um, about a year and a half or so ago, secured a $350-some-thousand-dollar grant for the town, and so we are um, finally getting on the uh, on the list with uh, with DASNY and with the state of where we can begin the work. Um, has taken some time, um, but the, the time that it's taken is because of the, the other projects that the state has that they work on, and, and this falls in a certain category, if you will, or on the list. So we're finally at the point on the list, and now Buff Harbor will assist us in getting, uh, in getting a lot of work done there. So I appreciate uh, um, Buff Harbor taking on the task. It's a lot of work that's involved, and for what they're doing it for, frankly, I think is, uh, is helping us out tremendously. So, anyone else on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lomar? Yes. Mr. Silver Herrera absent? Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 144.17 passes. Resolution 145.17. Award did open on Monday, May 1st, 2017, for tennis court repairs resurfacing at the U.S. OS and Zero Park to the Jurassic Park. To Copeland Coding Company, Incorporated, P.O. Box 595, Moscow, New York, 12123. Can we have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Polano. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmor. Anyone have the question? Um, just uh, quickly, um, both of these, these are two parts in town that have tennis courts. The tennis courts have not been uh, resurfaced and I, I really do not know how many decades, I don't know how many years, so probably since they've been built. And uh, so they really, really need it. Uh, so that thankfully, from the efforts of uh, development in the town, we, we do get parkland fees, and I mention this often because I want people to, to remember this. this is part of or part of um, uh, one of the things that we've done here in, in the community over the over the last several years. Those parkland fees come in, so uh, as developers develop, we get those the, those monies and we put them to use uh, with infrastructure and uh, and new um, uh, equipment in, in our parks throughout the town. Um, you're going to see a lot of um, new equipment, uh, bleachers, tables, a lot of other things from uh, Westina Park, Kiwanis, every park, in, every park in town. We just started receiving some of uh, the uh, our purchases that we made a, a couple of months ago. Some of that, that equipment's already coming in. So this month and next month, we'll start to see our parks uh, crews out there making a lot of improvements. And uh, with uh, something like this, the resurfacing of something like a tennis court, it's a specialty. It's not something that, that our town highway department has the equipment to, to do, and so this will be a, this will be a, comp uh, a nice. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, Judge Litz, who plays tennis, is happy with it. We're resurfacing Jurassic because that's, that's where he plays. Um, so so it'll, it'll work out. Uh, so we have motion by Member Volano, second by Member Larmore. Anyone else question? Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera's accent? Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Tomazo? Yes. Four yes, one yes. Resolution 145.17 passes. Resolution 146.17. Award be open on Monday, May 1st, 2017, for basketball court reconstruction at Memorial Park, Unis OS Gazeta Park, and Leonard C. White Park. To Valley Paving and Construction Incorporated, PO Box 262, Valley Falls, New York, 12185. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Member Lamar. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Christou. And uh, my question here, this the same uh, same thing. We have um, the three basketball courts and these three major parks on the eastern side of town are in, in very, very bad shape. Um, the one at uh, Leonard C. White, which is also known in the area, is Carmen Park. It only has one basketball hoop, so it's kind of hard to play a full court game there. 
um, and uh, there's uh, there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done to all three of them. So we're um, I'm thankful for the board also for helping us move this along. Um, at a prior meeting, we we called for the bids, and uh, we're going to get this work substantially completed before the kids are out of school. So we'll have uh, we'll have the ability to play on those courts as, uh, as the summer comes comes to uh, fruition for them. So, Ms. Marker, would you call the roll on 146, please? Mr. Christel? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Sister absent? Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Tomazo? Yes. Four yes, one. Okay, resolution 146, 17 passes. Resolution 147, 17, sorry. Award bids open on Thursday, April 13, 2017, for the purchase of highway materials, concrete blocks, caps, manhole blocks, manhole frames, and grates to various vendors are used by the Town of Rotterdam Highway Department for the year 2017 to Cranesville Block, 1250 Riverfront Center, Amsterdam, New York, 12010, and Shimon Supply, PO Box 527, Elmira, New York, 14902. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Linda Chris, do a second, please. I'm second. Okay, second by Linda Larmar. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Miller is absent. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. For the next question. Okay, resolution 147 17 passes. Resolution 148 17. Award bid open on Thursday, April 13, 2017, for the transportation and disposal of processed brown yard waste to CT. Argyle Cycle, Cycle LLC, 4 Open Square Way, Suite 421, Holyoke, Massachusetts, 01046. May I have a motion, please? I'm not moving. Uh, motion by Member Larmore, second by Member Christo. Yes. Okay. Anyone on a question? Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Snow Herrera is absent. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Okay, resolution 148 17 passes. Resolution 149 17. Award bids open on Thursday, April 13, 2017, for Autumn Tree Service, 419 Anthony Street, Schenectady, New York, 12308, Schenectady, for tree cutting and removal services for the Tom of Rotterdam Highway Department for the year 2017. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Milano. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmore. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Snow Herrera absent. Mr. Milano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 149, 17 passes. Resolution 150, 17. And board is open on Thursday, April 13th, 2017, for the purpose of purchase of pilot materials, crushed limestone, gravel, and sand to various vendors for the use by the Town of Rodney and Highway Department for the year 2017 to William M. Larnard and Son Incorporated, 544 Burdick Street, Rodney and New York, 1306, Powell and Industries Incorporated, P.O. Box 15097, Orly, New York, 12212, Carver Sand and Gravel, LLC, 494 Western Avenue, Altamont, New York, 12009, and Cushing Stone Company, 725 State Highway 5S, Amsterdam, New York, 12010. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I make the motion. Motion by Member Barmore. Is there a second, please? I will. Okay, second by Member Blano. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? <coughs> Mr. Pisco? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mr. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 150, 17 passes. Resolution 151, 17. A word bid open on Thursday, April 13, 2017, to Chamon, PO Box 527, Elmira, New York, 14902, for the purchase of highway materials consisting of watertight and end sections, round corrugated plastic pipe, and plastic underweight perforated pipe for the town of Rotterdam for the year 2017. May I have a motion, please? I'll move. Okay. Motion by Member Blano. Second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmore. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Snow Herrera is absent. Mr. Villano? Yes. Mr. Thomaso? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, resolution 151.17 passes. Resolution 152.17. Authorized gasoline and diesel expenditures from January 1st, 2017 through including March 31st, 2017 to be transferred into various accounts. Okay, motion, please. Um, motion by Member Villano. Second, please. I'll second. Okay, second by Member Chris. Do anyone on the question? Uh, I just wanted to uh, make mention uh, if you had a chance to look at this at all in the background on this. 
with the with the prices that we're having for all the gas that's being used, that's only a quarter of the year. So, and if you look at some of those prices, that's a quarter of the year. You've got to be multiply that by four. It's a lot of money being spent. So, I, we got to make sure we have good control. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christoph? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Uh, yes. As a family, yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Galano? Yes. Mr. Talazo? Yes. Before you ask one. Okay, resolution 152 17 passes. Resolution 153 17. Except Tom Kirk's report for the month of April 2017. Okay, we have a motion, please. I'll make the motion. Motion to amend the law, Miller. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Galano. On the question. Okay, Ms. Marker, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamore? Yes. Mrs. Hill and Herrera absent. Mr. Galano? Yes. Mr. Tomaso? Yes. Or yes, mm -hmm. no. Okay, resolution 15317 passes. Resolution 15417. Authorized budget transfers by the town controller to various accounts for 2017. Okay, we have a motion, please. I'll make the motion. Okay, motion by Member Lamore. Is there a second, please? Mm -hmm. I'll second. Second by Member Lamore. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Galano? Yes. Mr. Tanazo? Yes. 4 yes, 1 absent. Okay, resolution 15417 passes. Resolution 15517. Authorize the supervisor to enter into an agreement with John and McDonald Engineering Services located at 7 South Church Street, Schenectady, New York, 12305. For professional engineering services for the proposed Burdick Street Sanitary Sewer District extension in an amount not to exceed ten thousand dollars. Okay, we have a motion, please. I'll move. Motion by Member Crystal. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmark. Anyone with a question? Yes, Mr. Supervisor. I'd just like to indicate my perpetual support for the Burdick Street Sanitary Sewer. Uh, several years ago, I actually made an application to the state to try to get grant money. I'm glad that there's another opportunity um, for grant money again. Hopefully, the town of Rotterdam can be successful this time. This is a critical commercial corridor in the town. It's the formation and the cornerstone of what I envision to be new Rotterdam, running from Burdick Street West. Uh, not because it's better than uh, the eastern side of Rotterdam, but simply because there's more land available. There's an opportunity for commercial build out there. And that particular street being so close to the 25A and IEDA interchange, um, you know, it's it's an opportunity we can't miss. This is a critical improvement that the town needs. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a motion by Member Chris to second by Member Larmore. Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Is Miller Herrera absent? Mr. Villana? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Four yes. Okay, resolution 155.17 passes. Resolution 156.17. Authorize the supervisor to enter into an agreement with John M. McDonald Engineering Services located at 7 South Church Street, Street, New York, 1305, for professional engineering services for the New York State Water Grants application to make water system improvements in an amount now to exceed $5,000. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Okay. Um, motion by Mayor Christian. Okay. All right. Uh, second by Member Larmar. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you please call the roll? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Bellano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Four yes is one. Okay, resolution 15617 passes. Resolution 15717. Tom Ward, the town of Radovan, hereby consents to the town of Gilderland acting as the lead agency on the proposed Gilderland slash Rotterdam water interconnect project and authorizes the town planner to prepare, file, publish, and distribute all documents as necessary to comply with the 6 NYCRR Part 617 State Environmental, Environmental Quality Review. Can we have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christo. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Larmore. Anyone in the question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Uh, yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Bellano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Four yes. One okay, resolution. One pass, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Resolution 157.17 passes. Resolution 158.17. Okay, 
The town board, the town of Ivy, hereby declares the town as lead agency on number 6 NY CRR Part 617 C for this type one action to allow for identification of existing water system improvements aimed at the town of Ivy and Wellfield, transmission main, distribution system, and storage tanks. The town, of Ivy, or the town board of the town of Ivy hereby authorizes the town planner and Jack M. McDonald Engineering Incorporated to prepare, file, publish, and distribute all documents as necessary to comply with the 6 NYCRR Class 617 State Environmental Quality Review. Can we have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christou. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Member Romano. Anyone with a question? Okay, Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christou? Yes. Mr. Lamar? Yes. No, Mr. Taylor Rivera is absent. Mr. Romano? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, Resolution 15817 passes. Resolution 15917. Authorize the supervisor to negotiate and execute a consent order and final agreement on behalf of the Town of Rotterdam in the matter of the Town of Rotterdam docket number CWA-202-2016-0001 with the United States Environmental Protection Agency Region 2. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll move. Motion by Member Christie. May I have a second, please? Absolutely. Okay, second by Member Marmo. Anyone with a question? Okay, Mr. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Lomore? Yes. Mr. Rivera-Hudson? Mr. Lomore? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Four yes, one yes. Okay, resolution 15917 passes. Um, under uh, under committee reports and, and other business, I'd just like to mention a few things. Uh, one, you know, uh, some of the um, matters that were brought up by uh, Ms. Valley and and, um, and others here regarding, um, if you will, talk about water and culverts and and, and so on. We um, jet back is that the right term for that 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 piece of equipment? One hundred and fifty thousand dollar. Four hundred, three, almost four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Sorry, I, I think I, I missed all of it. Uh, what did we just spend one hundred fifty on? Was the uh, back, the backhaul? I think of the backhaul. Apologize. Uh, no, sorry. Septic truck. Septic truck. Right. Yeah. So that we need to crowd here too. So, um, so um, these vehicles are expensive, and in getting and getting the um, the equipment, we we are we're waiting for some equipment to come in. It's really it's not a back order. It's just sitting somewhere right now, waiting to get, to get to us through customs or some some uh, some holdup. And we just uh, learned of this holdup probably about a month and a half or so ago, two months ago maybe. And I think we're going to get equipment when in hopefully within the next thirty days. So sad. So so your point, you know, even even with our, for example, with our with our landfill, you know, right now we're paying a private hauler to go over there when the alarm goes off, the fellows to pump out the leachate out of the landfill. Uh, uh, to, to truck it to our uh, sewer plant for processing. Um, everything, uh, everything that we have from the perspective of equipment, vehicles, we've we've got replacing a lot of a lot of that, a lot of that. And so you know, some of the holdup with some of the projects in the town and some of the other things that we're doing is a little bit we're waiting for things to come in. We're waiting for contracts for paving, so on. So like for. Um, Paving. Isabella Street is going to get paved this year. It's on the paving schedule. I hope so. It's, going to get, yeah, no, it's, it's on the paving schedule. It's not hope so. It's on the paving schedule. You know, last year what happened was after all that work was done on the on the on the water main there, um, it was really late for us to go out to bid for that just that one street, right. and it would have cost us a lot more. So I, I, I apologize to you okay. and everyone else there for what you've had to endure for the past you know, year or so, less than a year, but. It won't be paid. So know that, that that's going to get accomplished, and we're going to address the concerns that you know everyone's brought up. You know, as far as sidewalks on Main Street, um, we will look and see what we can do with the state of New York to assist us with funding and financing, if you will, to do that. Anything that we do along a state road or a county road, you know, whether it's sidewalks or any other improvements that we would like to see happen, the state has to has to be a partner with us in it. It's not as simple as us just going in and saying let's just let just do it ourselves. Um, so we will we'll, we'll address that too. as you know um, probably seven eight years ago we had applied for a, 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 a the brownfield uh, opportunity basically for uh, a lot of money to come into Rotterdam Junction to do improvements like that like the sidewalks street lighting other streetscape improvements working with the state to do what other improvements they would like to make along five 
Um, the, the flooding concerns that we have along Lock Street and other areas, it takes CSX, it takes the state, it takes National Grid, everybody coming together. We're working on all these matters. Frankly, if we, if we could just do it ourselves, if we had the capacity to just do it ourselves and the money to do it ourselves, we would. So we're limited both ways. We don't own some of the property where we have to put the lines through. We don't own the property where we'd like to put new sidewalks. We have to go through the process to do that. So I, I, I the sidewalks are already there. The sidewalks are the sidewalks are sidewalks. the sidewalks are already there. We still have to go through with them to, to get them, <coughs> to, to get them approved. I'm just telling you what, what yeah. I got from I think, uh, So what, what kind of outlook are we looking what at? I, I mean, what is I'm, there what something I'm, that's going to actually? What I'm telling you is that, that Brownfield, working on this right now, the Brownfield or? the Brownfield opportunity grant that the town received several years ago and doing an analysis and a plan for Rodney Junction has not been has not been committed. In other words, the, the town did not take the steps necessary to really see some of these improvements come in. Without state funding, we can't do it on our own. So as we apply for more grants for whether it's Rodney Junction or, or other well, infrastructure, whatever it is, we have uh, we'll get a higher score for what we need to do here. You know that the firehouse is going to have some improvements. We have the well, the new well that was built. We have some money hopefully left over, um, and that's what the state is still, I guess I want to say, uh, crunching the numbers and for, for Lock Street and the, and the, and the that, drainage. Does that have so, to do with the $3 million that we got from the, from the federal government after Hurricane Irene? That, well, that, that's what I'm talking about, right? But all these things take, I'm just telling you, that you think about when, when the, from the time that the, all the, the, the floods happened in 11, right, and so on, and to today, that's how long it took for us to just get where we are today. And as you can see, the construction here will start hopefully soon at some point in the near future. Jim, do you have an update for that? Can you just give us some idea? Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you don't mind. So, you all know, it all started with the flood, Irene, in, in uh, 2011. And uh, so ever since then the next storm, this is pretty huge, next storm in Hurricane Sandy down the down state, big devastation there too. So uh, HUD got together with, uh, with all the local people down there and decided to give funds to fix the homeowners in, in, uh, in downstate. And then somebody thankfully said, oh wait, didn't upstate have something last year? So that's how uh, Broward Inn Junction, also Street Harry, we got money from HUD as well. And then they went through a whole program to benefit the uh, firehouse and these individuals like the house and everything else to get things done. So long story, we've been after an addition to the firehouse. And we finally got it approved. And just last Friday, the funds are actually starting to flow. So we'll start construction here. Pre-construction meetings Tuesday, and we'll start construction shortly thereafter. And sure. just so you know, it's 100% it's funded by the federal government through uh, government, governor's office to still recovery. So taxpayers here in the town, hopefully nobody's paying in this one. And it's uh, not a new firehouse, I'm just a new firehouse early. It's an addition, primarily to uh, you know double this room, this size. Uh, the next, for the next disaster, we'll have a triage area, we'll have more storage space, and we'll have a command center. That's what it's for. Everything from this side, that wall there stays the same. Another big thing is in closing is the ADA compliant restroom, which we don't have here. So that was another huge one that we needed to do. So that's it. Hopefully it's finally going to Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and thank you. Thanks very much. And so, also um, back on Earth Day, uh, some of the members of our parks committee, there's a few, few of the usual suspects here, and this is uh, Jim Carangelo, who's just up front there, and uh, Andrea and uh, Joe Coppola, uh, Paul Cook, Dan Garrow, Rosalind Warlick, Christian Cook, uh, and Judy Tamir, and um, other members of the uh, community, Michelle Cook, uh, Dan Marco was there, Bob Sherman, um, Boy Scout volunteer to earn community service accreditation. To help clean up uh, Kiwanis uh, boat launch. We also had a, and I, I, I think I left another picture elsewhere, but we had a, um, a dedication to Jurassic Park uh, about a week or so ago. Um, the new sign that was put together, thanks to Matty, Mark, and ARC, and, um, and uh, the efforts of our Parks Committee. Roz, why don't you get up and show that picture? Yeah, yeah, Roz, do you have that one? Yeah. I got another one. Yeah. So nice, nice new sign for that park. So and again, same, same here. You'll see, you'll see a new sign for um, for Kiwanis uh, later this year, late this year. Oh, thanks. So that's um, there, 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 there's a group for you right there. So it was nice. That's a beautiful sign. The the the, the, the um, you know create that it was created by the ARC and Matt, the, the staff of uh, Maple Ridge. 
really nice. The other thing that we're, we're I'll, I'll be proposing as soon as we get some some paperwork uh, in is that you know at the ARC they um, they don't just uh, grow you know flowers and plants that they actually will go out members and the staff will go out and actually plant them. So we're exploring the option or opportunity to partner with them to have them do uh, uh, plantings or town parks, which would be uh, which would be great. So that that will come up in the near in the near future. Mr. Supervisor, I would just like to say that that the Rotterdam Parks Advisory Committee is most definitely a diamond in the rough. It's a group of volunteers. You know, we have a good parks department. But if we just become that much more effective that we use these parkland fees, I, I don't know if everybody understands that any time a development goes in, a, a project goes in, there's a certain amount of money that is dedicated to parkland fees that can only be used for parks, parkland improvements, and so on. And that direction, plus the sweat equity that the Parks Advisory <coughs> Committee uh, provides is is priceless and invaluable and I just think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> yeah Rod, we're talking about you and your crew. <laughs> Andrew, it's the second time you got a call. Andrew, yeah. And Andrew, yeah. Sure. Um, also, you know, last uh, last uh, week or so we had uh, Boil Water Advisory in, in um, Water 5 and the rest of Rotterdam except for the junction obviously. Um, and um, what happened there was our coordinating our coordinating system um, stopped. We have glass coordination system at the at the plant, uh, and uh, they've isolated the problem. The gas coordination system is back up and running. Uh, during the time that the gas coordination system was down, what we were doing is is the same process that really we use here, which is adding the hydrochloride, so the liquid chlorine and just a little bit goes into the lines in order for their if they picks up any bacteria or anything in the lines before it gets to your homes. That's why it's so clean. That's why it's so good. Besides, you know, you don't have a problem with our we don't have any problems with our water quality. And uh, and a lot of that is due to you know where we are in the aquifer, how we protect it. Uh, but just importantly the, the work that's uh, committed to by our by our water uh, department employees. I think that they do a, a great job. Well one of the one of the, 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 the real things that I find from these incidents is that, and we talked a little bit about this last night. I was with the fire chiefs with with Sean Taylor and all, all the other fire chiefs from the area last night. And um, you know, how do we how do we really get information out there? Technology is great, and, and you know, you can get a lot of information, a lot of misinformation, very very quickly. Um, so there, the county does have a robo dial system. So there is a there is if you if you, if you were from the other part of town we've been here if in the past you had some kind of a um, problem with the water or some other emergency you would get a reverse dial right they would dial you up and you leave, give you a message so on our town website at rotterdamny.org what we have is we have a, a spot on the bottom of the portion of the page so that you can you can <coughs> you can put your cell phone number in there or some other way for us to contact you by phone the other thing that I'm, um, that we're looking to do yeah, you know, the other thing that it's automatic. If you have a home phone or like through Spectrum or, or Time Warner, it'll come to you. The other thing that we're looking at is um, is the opportunity or option of having a dedicated phone number for Rotterdam. So that if something were to happen like this and you wanted to get information, we would have you know if you're, if you're calling about the water advisory, press one, that kind of thing. So we're we're going to try to develop some kind of a some kind of an informational system. That, uh, so if you're not getting the information dialed to you, somewhere where you can call up and get something very quickly so that you know what's going on in case of an emergency, in case of water. Uh, the water. We welcome the suggestions water. on how to yeah, do that. And let us know if there's something that you, yeah, that you think of that might be better. But we've got to use all these resources, right, to, to get the word out to everybody. Uh, because I, one of my relatives said to me, geez, you know, I, I, my, my daughter brushed her teeth with the water. Is it okay? The water still, it's okay. You know, it was okay. Um, what happened was, as a, as a, you know, it was precautionary. Uh, you know, and I would never tell anyone not to follow the boil water advisory. So don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Yeah. However, when when our when our town employees, water employees, went around the town to test in different locations, actually, they even go to Top's Diner is one location where we test the water to see if it's okay. Um, no matter where they went in town, the chlorine was fine. But oh, because, but, right, but, but because we had a shutdown on that chlorination system, 
we had to issue a boil water advisory regardless because if something else happened somewhere else we wouldn't know it um, what happens is when that when that water goes off if you're right there and the pumps are off pumps can be shut off there's not a boil water advisory right because the pumps aren't pumping water that needs to be chlorinated does that make sense right so so you can shut that down right away if there's not a boil water advisory but if you're not there when that Coordination system shuts off and those pumps are still going, you're on a boil water advisory. That's just how it works. But again, um, you know, state to state, you know, state rules. And you know, th thankfully, thankfully we have those rules and those and those procedures because look, you know, we, we see what's happening in other communities across the country, whether we're talking about Flint, Michigan, or even here in Hoosick Falls locally. You know, there there are there are water quality is the most important, uh, in my opinion, asset that we have in our town. So I you know know that we're doing everything we can to protect it and to expand it and to make it make it better for everyone and improve the pressure and everything else so we will see more improvements coming but um, if you if you can for the time being if you if you have a cell phone go to the town website uh, again rottermny.org and, and put in your cell phone number in there and your family cell phone number so the alerts come to you um, anyone else have anything under committee reports or supervisor i move to adjourn Dennis, Mr. Sorry. Supervisor, before I apologize, I didn't sign it at the beginning because okay. uh, I'm not very familiar with the process. Okay. Of the enough. Can I have two minutes just to Absolutely. share briefly? Yeah, would you mind coming up to sure. the front? State your name for the, for the record, from my desk. My name is Dennis Cirilla. I reside at uh, 1346 Sterling Road. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist by trade and coach at night. I specialize in trauma. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Ellen Brown and the Challenger Little League and our travel team. Uh, about a year ago, I met, uh, developed a relationship with Ellen Brown to use the, Westina, the old Westina Little League Park. Um, the Challengers have been using it for quite some time. And luckily enough, I stumbled upon these folks and um, developed a place for my team uh, to play along with the Challengers. Now, our relationship consists of uh, using, I, uh, I received a permit to use the fields, uh, and I take care of the fields for them. Uh, you do a great maintain, job. Pardon me? You do a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we maintain them. They had, lucky enough, they had donated a machine to take care of the fields, uh, keep them level, keep them trim, the infill for these handicapped folks. Now, this park is a gold mine in the junction. Uh, I'm there four or five days a week with my team, with the challengers. It provides these uh, unfortunate kids and adults. Tuesdays are the kids, you no, know, Mondays are the kids, Tuesday, Thursdays, the adults play. And Ellen puts a lot of time and effort into this. Uh, I want to thank um, Supervisor Thomas Ohm, uh, Mr. Thomas Ohm, for spending two weekends over the summer, prime weekends, that's valuable to everybody. His own time painting uh, the concession stand, the dugouts, leveling off. Uh, the dugouts which are have heaved over the years uh, from the weather for these handicapped folks. We're talking about walkers, wheelchairs, disabilities, uh, the parking lot, uh, potholes. Uh, again, it's a gold mine down there. You may not even know where it is on Putnam Street. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, concession stand opens, we play baseball, people come. There's a park you can see where the kids can play. One of the few parks where you can actually see your kids playing while you're trying to do something. Um, People, local people come down, folks come down and, and, and fancy the games. So it's, it's a nice place. The challengers need it. It provides them the opportunity to play on a weekly basis. She puts a ton of time. I don't see how folks with uh, disabilities, the fencing to get in, it's up. The weather is taking, taking its toll on it. And these folks can't really get around safely uh, to use the field properly like folks with disabilities should be able to. So I'd like to see, I don't know how the whole business works with resolutions and I can put somebody to sleep and more importantly wake them up, but I don't know how all this process works. But I would like to see 158-17 to be something on the Steiner Little League Park to help these folks. And again, we use it uh, with them and it's perfect, but I would just like to see that it's some point addressed. I don't know, it's, it's okay with Mr. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, is there anything? Just like it to be both for both arts, for your kids and my kids yeah. to make it workable. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've been there a couple of times, you know, <clears throat> these, these matters. One of the things that I can tell you is now that the rains have stopped, 
besides besides the uh, equipment that, that is going to come down, we have the bleachers and some other equipment that will be coming down to us by as well. Um, we're already working on uh, getting uh, the um, the area around the uh, concession stand, get some concrete put in the blacktop, and get everything wheelchair accessible, handicap accessible, I should say, and uh, get a, a, a a roof over the top of that concession area. As far as the fencing and those other matters, I know that you we had met at the time with um, an individual who said he was going to help us by drawing some some things up. Did that ever come out? No, it didn't. Um, okay. So, thing. so I just want to say, so, so from that perspective, what we need to do because that that, that property is state owned, we have a long term relationship or lease on that property. Any any other improvements that we do. Uh, that we may be able to get that are higher ticket items that we may be able to get maybe get some state attention for us if we can put together a plan uh, for that park exactly what we want to see happen there we can approach the canal authority maybe approach parks and rec see if they would help fund it if not we'll look and see what we can do and what we can do with private donations with parkland fees and so on and we'll try to do something because the fencing that we, we spoke about we're talking about major Actually, I actually don't want to say major changes, but really we want to change the fencing. We don't want to maintain this there. We want to put new fencing on. Let's and, see. And, and, right. And, and, and put in dugouts that are accessible to everyone. Yep. So, um, you know, let's work on it. You got my commitment for that. So whenever you want to get together again, but let's, I think we need to get someone engaged that will volunteer their time to draw everything up for us. And I'll work on that. I didn't know that they weren't coming back to you. I, I haven't, I haven't received anything. I mean. Okay. I didn't know that. You know, they have, they have. A machine again, a machine that was privately donated. I bring back and forth to my house to we'll make it accessible. We, we have um, we have spec'd out already a uh, shed for that. that. That's already spec'd out, and I, I just don't know that it's been ordered. That's all. It's spec'd out. It's, it's, it's we have to get down to report a pad for it. Reporting pad for the uh, I said the pad uh, there maybe also kind of right. in front of the yeah concession area. So that that's happened. I mean, it will happen this year. I just can't tell you the exact. You know, date, but, but it's it's in the plan. We the have the moving. yeah, the yeah. The weather's been yeah. It's, it's, it hasn't been 100 percent cooperative. Yeah. But again, all this equipment is coming in. It's going to take our five, six parks folks and even the the uh, children, the kids that we're going to hire for the summer, the students, I should say. Uh, they're going they're going to be they're going to be busy. They're going to be busy. But um, but I love what you do down there. I mean, what what, what happens in that in that park is, is amazing. And I apologize to you. Ahead of time, I won't be there for the opening day. I have graduations, uh, one for my niece and uh, out of town, and then our youngest daughter graduates with her bachelor's uh, on the 20th. So, so we'll be we'll be down for that. So, but other folks will be there, you know. And uh, but, but I, I always really enjoy the opening day there very much. It's it's it's, 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 a, it's a great event. So let's. Why don't we, you have my number? Yeah. Let's just, we're going to have to find an engineer that, that has the, the time to do what we need to do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, oh, and I was looking forward to uh, last weekend. I came by, but nobody was there. So I waited for a while, and I just said, oh, that's it. But uh, I won't be able to make it either for the opening, because I'm going to be on vacation, so. No I remember last year, I won a good prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also I can't make any of my granddaughters graduating in Hofstra, so I will be coming to the No problem, We'll be by for a game. I, 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 I will be. Alan, I'm going to try to be there. Oh, there you go. He's going to bring cookies. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyone else? No. Can we call a uh, uh, motion for adjournment? I'll place a motion. Motion by Member Christopher for adjournment. Is there a second? I'll for second. Adjournment. Second by Member Luana. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much.